I've taught this principle in leadership about the Queen of Sheba, but I want to talk to you tonight. And I don't preach a lot of Sunday nights, but we're going to preach tonight. Amen. And when the Queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon, she came to prove Solomon with hard questions at Jerusalem with a very great company and camels and bare spices and gold in abundance and precious stones. And when she had was come to Solomon, she communed with him of all that was in her heart. And Solomon told her all her questions, and there was nothing hid from Solomon, which he told her not. And when the queen of Sheba had seen the wisdom of Solomon in the house that he had built, and the meat at his table, and the sitting of his servants, and the attendance of his ministers, and their apparel, and his cupbearers also, and their apparel, and his ascent by which he went up into the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. And she said to the king, it was true it was a true report which I heard in mine own land of thine acts and of thy wisdom. Howbeit I believed not their words until I came and mine eyes had seen it. And behold, the one half of the greatness of thy wisdom was not told me for thou exceedest the fame that I heard. Happy are thy men and happy are these thy servants which stand continually before thee and hear thy wisdom. Look at your neighbor and say tonight we're going to take a look from an outsider's perspective. An outsider's perspective Jesus I love you and I love these people help me to do a good job delivering your word as I speak to me I pray that someone would benefit as they listen in in Jesus name you can be seated in the presence of the Lord the date was September 6 1976 a young Russian fighter pilot by the name of Viktor Belenkov had stepped into an extremely high-tech airplane called the MiG-25 Foxbat. It was known to exist and had been spotted in the sky but never been able to view up close because it was much faster than the planes that had tried to capture it. The rumor was that it was vastly superior to anything the West had. Its speed was rumored to be three times faster than the speed of sound. It could operate at the altitude of 90,000 feet, making it much superior to any plane that they had in the United States. If this was true, it would mean that the U.S. had lost control over air superiority. This would have been detrimental to the defense of our great country and our allies. Unknown to anyone in Russia, there was this pilot, Viktor Belenko. Something had started to stir in him a dissatisfaction with where he was. He'd become disillusioned with all of the propaganda in his home country of Mother Russia. The government had been telling him lies and he knew it and he began to wonder whether or not it was true the rumors he had heard about America. So he decided to defect to the West and return for asylum. He would provide them with this MiG-25 Foxbat, I'm sorry, Foxbat airplane along with the manual and everything he knew about the construction of it. So on a clear day, he took off, headed towards Japan. He reported to his superiors that he had engine trouble and needed to fly at a low altitude. And by the time the Russians realized what had happened, it was too late. They tried to catch him, but flying and catching him was too, it was impossible because he was flying the fastest airplane in their fleet. He actually landed at a commercial airport with only 30 seconds of fuel left, almost crashing into a Boeing 27. He outran the runway, but he survived and the plane was intact. The United States government was thrilled. The Russians, of course, began to scream and kick and beg for their plane back. And so we did. We gave it back. However, first we took it to Dayton, Ohio, where we disassembled it piece by piece. We studied all of the technology and then put all the pieces in a box and mailed them back to Russia. God bless America. But as a gesture to this man by the name of Viktor Belenko, a gratitude and showing him our thanksgiving, we offered him, of course, asylum and anything that he would want. He said, I would like a tour of America. That was his request. I want to see if what I've heard is true, but I don't want to see New York City. I don't want to see your museums. I don't want to see your monuments. I just want to see how average Joe lives. And so we granted him his petition. He, he started traveling around 
the United States, little towns and small communities and rural areas, and he would have them stop randomly where he would just walk into a store and look and his eyes would almost pop out of his head. He saw shelves that were loaded with food, racks filled with clothing, and he was blown away. After a few days of this travel, he grew immensely frustrated and almost to the point of anger, it says. He, he said, who's radioing ahead? Where is the radio? And they said, what are you talking about, the Americans said. He said, there's no way that your, your stores are this full of stuff. You guys are staging it so that when I get there, it will be a fake and it's false. And they said, no, sir. Every store in the United States of America has more food than the town could eat. They actually throw food away. He said, wow, I can't believe my eyes. What impressed him most is that when he went, there was shelf after shelf with fresh produce, even in rural areas that had fresh produce. He, one day, uh, taking a, uh, a job in, in Wyoming just to kind of see as a, as a ranch hand, to be a part of just normal life, uh, one of the things he would do daily is go to the store and buy a different product and enjoy it. One day, out on the, the, the range, he was telling one of his co-workers how much he was enjoying the canned meat that he was eating. And they returned home, and uh, he said, look, it's, it's this. And the guy said, oh, my goodness, you have a cat. And Victor said, I, I don't have a cat. He said, that is cat food you're eating. And the guy said, oh, my goodness, American cat food is better than Russian regular food. God bless America. Sometimes you just have to get an outsider's perspective so that you can stop taking things for granted. For what is common to us is extraordinary to everyone else. I heard this story, and some of you are familiar with my story, but it reminded me, for those of you that are new, hear it again, hear it for the first, and those that are here, uh, hear it again, but uh, I remember that the first time that I came back to America, I was born here, but left when I was 17 months, so I don't remember America, uh, but I remember coming back as a young nine-year-old boy, and uh, my sister had actually been born in Germany, she has a little Nazi in her, so... <laughs> Forgive her when she's mean to you. I've had to bear it, bear the burden my entire life. I would have had hair, but look, it's going. I'm 40. It's already so. Uh, so I'm the real American. We always argued about that. But my parents raised an American, even in a foreign land in the Netherlands. We spoke English. We celebrated the Fourth of July in Holland. That <laughs> uh, was great. And uh, and so I, I remember coming home. It was always uh, it was a great time. Uh, packing our bags for the United States of America, landing, I can't remember which city it was, it was a large metropolitan city with an airport, and uh, walking into the food court. I remember the first time I tasted Dr. Pepper and root beer and all of these things, and uh, uh, McDonald's. Uh, the McDonald's where, where, where we lived at that time was like 40 minutes away, and it was very expensive, and my dad is very frugal, and so we would go for my birthday, and y'all just eat there and don't like it. And I love it. It's amazing. I still love McDonald's. It's a great. They've got the greatest Coke, you know. Oh, man, it's so good. A cheeseburger, double toast the bread, no mustard. <laughs> Loving it. I'd never had Taco Bell, but I remember the first time I had Taco Bell. At that time, you could get a taco for 25 cents. It was amazing. And uh, then, of course, free refills were extraordinary. The fact that you could continually fill your, your cup with this wonderful thing. No wonder we're all the size we are. Uh, just kept. And then the size of our, 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 our cars, Suburbans, and 18-wheelers. And, and that, at that time, there was a place. Anybody remember Shoney's? Has anybody ever been to Shoney's? If you, now, now you're living. You're living if you've been to Shoney's. This generation is missing out on some of the greatest things that could ever happen. And Shoney's was one of those things. And then you could just eat and eat and eat and eat. And the Golden Corral is taking it to another level of low. But Shoney's was high on the... Then there was this place called Ryan's. Y'all ever been to Ryan's? They would grill the steak right there up in front of you. Ooh, it was good, man. Then I remember the first time I got a blizzard at Dairy Queen. It was incredible. American cereal. Y'all grew up. You don't remember the first time you tasted Fruity Pebbles, but I do. And it was just incredible. It was America. 
And when I talk to you about this great country and the things you take for granted, from this side in Holland, when we get a, when you go to get a shopping cart in Holland, you have to have a coin. You put the coin in, and, and and if you don't have a coin, you don't get a shopping cart. And to get your shopping cart back, you have to run. Even if it's pouring rain, if it's pouring rain in here, I know y'all are all good Christians. You're not going to admit it, but you know you leave your cart in the parking lot. Right there, you know you do because I've seen you. I've been scoping you out, and you like you just you looking around like this. But it's me in my in my incognito cop car, and I'm I'm like I saw you there. Put your because it was raining, and you didn't want to put it back. But you got to put it back to get your money back in Holland. And and here we are. It's just incredible. I mean, it's it's amazing how blessed we are. We didn't have air conditioning. You know the do you know the vast majority of the world, vast majority, even the Western European countries do not have air conditioning in their homes I'm serious we grew up my house was one of the nicest houses we didn't have air conditioning and and here you come you're like oh god if it's not negative 45 at the water burger with water running down the inside of the I wear coats into the restaurants here it's so cold and here we are with air conditions it's just an amazing place everything's huge you have multiple cars you in, in, in the church I pastored in the Netherlands out of the 150 people that attended four of them had cars that's incredible, isn't it? This is Western. That's, that's welcome to socialism. And they rode bikes. And you're like, oh, that's really great. Not when it's pouring rain and freezing. It's not great. Bikes are recreational, not requirements to Americans. Come on. Trains are not fun. You're like, oh, that's so romantic. Until you have to do it every day. And you miss the train by one minute and get fired. Because they don't wait on you. Come on. But y'all just get in your cars, you fire them up in your garage, you know, push the little button. You can pre, you can pre-start it now. You know, your car's waiting on you, it's cool, the seats are like blowing cold air in all the, those wonderful places that need to be cool, you know what I mean? It's just great, it's amazing, the modern technology that we have. It's incredible. It was America, and, and it's the greatest, and today I believe it truly is, and I, I'm thankful for this great country, but today, dear friends, I'm, I'm really not talking about America, I'm talking about a country that's far greater than the United States of America, for as great as it is, as grand as it is, uh, it will come to an end. The, the governments of earth will crumble, and there is a, a rock hewn without hand that will crumble Come from the mountain. It will crush every kingdom, man-made kingdom and rise up and fill the earth and that is the government of God, the kingdom of God. I said the kingdom of God. And we can get used to living for God and coming to church and taking it for granted and saying, oh, that's just another outpouring of the Holy Ghost. I, I remember Brother Graham was telling me one time that he was preaching a, a revival and, and they were having a powerful move of the Holy Ghost. And, and he went down and, and there was a girl there and, and uh, 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 the tears were, were streaming down her face. And, 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 and she said, she asked him this question. She said, Pastor, what, what, what am I feeling? What am I? what am I feeling and he said that's God and she said God she said I've never I've never felt this before and he stood there and he said Matt I've stood in the presence of God with my mind already at McDonald's uh, and there's people that have never experienced uh, do you realize that the wave of God's glory that swept across as we were singing and shouting uh, that that's something that you shouldn't take for granted uh, there's somebody in the world uh, I said the vast majority of the world uh, has never felt the joy of lifting their hands uh, but you get to feel it week in uh, and week out it ought never to be oh yeah that's just God that's just the Holy Ghost. That's just the moving of the Spirit. But every time I sense His presence, let there be an awe inside of Matthew Tuttle that says, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Come on, church can't just be normal. Come on, I said church just can't be average. Oh, that's just another sermon. No, this is, come on, there's somebody that would give their life to have a Bible in their hands, to have an opportunity to come into a house and feel what you feel. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And so this evening in our reading, we find the queen of Sheba, an Ethiopian woman who shows up, not an average person in, 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 in value and in, in net worth, I should say. She was the queen of Sheba, well-known, famous, and popular. She shows up, the Bible says, with a great company of people, camels that are bearing spices, gold in abundance. She has diamonds and rubies and pearls. She's loaded, she's rich, and she comes with gifts. And she had heard about the fame of Solomon 
concerning the name of the Lord. God links his name to people on the earth and places on the earth. In 2 Chronicles 9 and 2, and Solomon told her all her questions. And there was nothing hid from Solomon, which he told her not. She came into the church and found the answers to life. An outsider's perspective was, wow, these people have a reason to live. She walked in and said, wow, these aren't just ordinary people. I live my life for gold and silver. I live my life for rubies and pearls. I've got nice clothes, but why am I alive? Come on, ask yourself that, dear friend. Why are you here? You know the answer. You know why you're here. You were created in the image of God, and for thy pleasure, I was created. I have a purpose far superior than getting wealthy. I've got a purpose, come on, to please and live for God. And an outsider's perspective of your life is that you are a blessed people. You are a blessed people. And when the queen of Sheba saw the wisdom of Solomon and the house that he had built, she came in and said, wow, he knows things that I don't know. And look at the house that he has built. Look at the building. She came in and said, wow, look at the building. And I, I, I still come into Eastgate Church and I go, wow, look at what God has done. I said, I walk in sometimes through the foyer because I've, I've attended churches and I've pastored churches uh, where I had to set up folding chairs and, and clean up the trash. Uh, but I come into a beautiful building. Uh, I said, I walk into a beautiful building. Normally, where I grew up, uh, it was a metal folding chair or it was a wooden, hard wooden chair. But you've got a luxury padded pew that hits you just right with air conditioning blowing on you just right. Uh, heat in the winter. Uh, you walk in and the lights are just right. I've got, this, I've got this microphone that was probably, it's probably cost more than the whole sound system that dad and I could afford in Holland. I, I walk in and I look at our drums. We didn't have drums growing up. And, and we are so awesome that we built our drums their own house. I said, our drums aren't just drums. They have a house and then they have like this circle house. It's like a, it's like a glass house. It's like, ooh, look at me. And then we're like, we should put a symbol up. Oh, how about we put a hundred symbols up? And we've got 16 drumsticks. And our drummer, he, he, he's so talented. He has his own personal fan. Come on, somebody. And we've got, we've got an organ and we've got electric guitars and I see I see an acoustic guitar sitting over here and I look over here and we don't just have one keyboard God's given us two keyboards and I see a bass guitar we got MacBooks and uh, this kind of book and 37 micro our microphones are having babies it's unbelievable they're just all over the place these microphones and and all of this stuff and I look around and I say wow there's a world full of people that go to church uh, and they're underground in prison cells uh, there's a, there's people that go to church uh, and they're in secret in silence but I come into a building uh, and I can turn it as loud as I want and I can leap as high as I want and I can run if I want and I can shout you ought to never take it for granted because from an outsider's perspective you're the most blessed people in the world I'm the most blessed man in Come on, when it's done, we can go play ball in a, in a gym right behind. Come on, uh, you can play volleyball or basketball. If you're, come on, if you don't like the school system we're in, you got a school that you can put them in. A call, you come in, and some of the complaints are, y'all don't have the white chocolate mocha. Oh, there aren't any gluten-free donuts this Sunday. Can you imagine somebody in Iran hearing you say, I can't believe they didn't have gluten-free donuts at the coffee shop this morning at church before morning worship. Come on, somebody. Whoa. You walk in, you can get a cup of coffee, walk across to the store and pick up a candle, walk into this house, and you got somebody, come on, that high-fives you and loves on you a little bit. Uh, come on, you can complain about the air conditioner. Come on, the ACs went out this summer. We had like a bunch of ACs out and everybody was like, it's too hot, it's too hot, it's too hot. I said, thank God you got AC, thank God you got AC, thank God you got AC, thank God you got AC. Because most of the world, uh, I, I've been, I've been, I've been to every, almost every country in, in Western Europe. I've been to Asia and Africa. Most of them come and they just sweat their faces off. And come on, but here we are on padded pews in air-conditioned church. 
want them a sick in God to look down at us spoiled little brats we keep, but there they are in Africa for three hours long standing on a dirt come on if they can do it on a dirt floor under a tent if they can do it without air conditioning what's your excuse you ought to be up you ought to give God praise you ought to magnify the name of Jesus come on so we go to church we say, give our Sunday come on because from an outsider's perspective Come on, young people. Don't you sit there like a bunch of spoiled brats. You've got your own chapel. I said you've got your own little church back there with your own little sound system. You've got lights. You've got, come on, a gym. Our kids have their own little church back there. They've got classrooms and games and padded pews and padded chairs and, and golf carts. You pull into the parking lot and we pick you up in a golf cart. Then you walk in and the ushers have uniforms on and they smile and the security team, there's more guns in here. I just always say that just for the sake of the internet in case Ahmed's watching. There's a lot of guns in here. <laughs> and you walk in. My latte was a little cold. I've heard this sermon before. Oh, it's, oh, it's so hot. Ugh. I'm blessed. We are blessed. I can't believe we have to go to church on Sunday night. Baby, if a church in Russia had a church like this, they'd go to church every night. What's sad is that we only use it, one, come on, that we only use it really one full day. I say we use it all the time. Why? Because we're blessed. We're blessed. And sometimes you just need to step back and look at your life from someone else's perspective. And the Queen of Sheba said, my God, your building's beautiful. Wow, look at everything you have. Come on. You, do you realize we've got people right now trying to move divider from Germany, trying to move divider from South America, trying to move divider from Holland, you know why? They're watching you on the internet and they're saying, man, I want to get to that place. Man, I want to get to that place. Come on, how many of you moved from, hey, California moved to here, Oregon moved to here, Missouri's moved to here. We got them from Tennessee, why? Because they said there's something going on over there at Eastgate and I want to be a part of it. So hey, dear Eastgate, don't ever take for granted what you've got. Don't you ever take for granted the blessing that God has bestowed so, so abundantly upon us. We are blessed. She said the building's bad to the bone and then she said the meat of his table. She said, my goodness, that dude can preach. That's my favorite one. I, I, I could spend a lot of time right here. I had somebody come up to me. They'd went and traveled, I don't know, somewhere to some camp meeting. And they came back and said, I said, how was it? They said, oh, Pastor, it was good. But really, Sunday night at Eastgate is better than that. I tell you, I, I preach camp meetings. I've preached them in almost every state in the United States of America. It's going to be hard to beat a Sunday night at Eastgate Church. And this is just a Sunday night. But oh, no, it's not just a Sunday night. It's the day the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad it's another day. And I don't just take another Sunday night for granted. I only get 52 a year. So you know what? I'm going to get everything I can out of this one. I'm going to get every drop of blessing, every drop of anointing, every, come on, I'm going to get full of his power. That's why we run. That's why we shout. That's why we dance. Because we realize we are a blessed people. I said, we are, a, that's it, we are, a, oh, come on, that's it, 70 years old, baptized in Jesus' name, but, but we're a blessed people, brother, that's it, brother Sidney, that's it, that's it, brother, sister. And they entered into the temple, leaping 
running and praising God. We're not going to take it for granted, God. When we look at our lives from a perspective of another, we must say you have been good. You have been good to me. You've been good to my marriage and my money. You've been good to my house and my family. You've been good to my body. You've been good to my mind. You've been good. You've been good. Come on. You could have woke up in another country. You could have woke up without the Holy Ghost. You are blessed. And really, if you think about what you deserve, considering what you did, you do deserve jail. Come on. You do deserve an STD. You do deserve trouble. You Come on. But grace of God and the mercy of God. Woo. Hallelujah. 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 She said, my goodness, this is incredible. This is amazing. This, well, fake weed. Let me ask you, is the fake weed better than the Holy Ghost? Uh, Holy Ghost is way better. All right. You, cocaine. Holy Ghost or cocaine? Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost or crystal meth? Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost or all of them? Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Okay. Hey, young people. Hey, young people. From their perspective, this is, they did it. They did it. And what they're saying is, it's stupid. You'd be a moron. So why don't you just take their perspective and say, if they're telling me it's bad, come on, because they, remember how they looked when they came in without teeth in their heads? Uh, come on, remember, you, come on, remember how they looked uh, broken and busted. They didn't have a home or a family. But look at them now and you can't pry them out. And don't you make fun of them when they start running those aisles. Uh, you just don't have the same perspective. Uh, what you ought to do is say, I'll run with you because I didn't have to get set free from crystal meth. Uh, I didn't have to get set free from chemical marijuana that's it Caleb there ought to be somebody that shouts harder than a drug addict is the one that never did drugs there ought to be somebody that leaps higher than somebody set free from alcohol that's somebody that never was addicted to it from their perspective this is the greatest life ah you'd be a fool to call them a fool She said, my God, this is awesome. She said, the, the preaching and the, the building. And then she said, the sitting of his servants. And that, that, that sitting of the servants here, this, that, 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 that means she said the sitting, that means the houses of the, the people that live there. The sitting means the houses that they lived in. She said, your servants' homes are nicer than the wealthy in my country. Do you realize that the house you live in is 99% guaranteed nicer than most people live in the world? How many of you, how many of you live in a one bedroom, one bath? Okay, there's a few. How many of you live just in a three bedroom, two bath? There you go. You got neighbors or is it, on, is it freestanding? Freestanding, yeah, okay. You got a freestanding house, three bedroom. How, how much land are you on? 1.6 acres, what do you do for a living? You work in a refinery, so you work a regular job, but you live in a three-bedroom, two-bath house on 1.1 acres. Okay, Dad, 1.1 acres, 3.2, 2 in Holland would be called a villa. And what would it go for? It would go for how much? About 1.5. 1.5 million euro. Euro is at 1.3 exchange rate, so let's put that at about 1.8. Your house that you live in, just ordinary Joe, come on somebody, is a $1.8 million house to pretty much everybody else around the world. But you just live in it every day and wake up and sometimes you're like, oh, this is too small. When the rest of the world would say, my God, if I had, if I had $2 million, I would live in your house. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying that the way we see... Come on. And that boy used to drink more liquor than anybody in the building. He didn't have the money to have a house. He lived in a little rundown trailer, but God came and blessed him. And you know what? From this perspective, I see a Mr. 112 Acres living like a king. You know why? Because God's good to his people. And from the outsider's perspective, 
It's not a setup, visitor friend. Nobody went ahead. Nobody filled the cover. We're not making it up. It's real. We are blessed. The cars in that parking lot, we didn't rent them to show off. God gave them to us. The houses we live in, too, live in, they're not given to us to make you feel insecure. God gave them to us. It's a good, good, good life. Woo! He said, man. Woo! But Tommy, it's amazing. It's amazing. The servants are more blessed than our, than our royalty. And the attendance of his ministers. She, she said, and, and the attendance of your ministers. That's the, the word minister here is worshipers. The way you worship God. Wow. With the liberty and the freedom. You clap your hands and you shout and you dance. And do you realize most places you go, it's so tight. You say boo, they get scared. I'm serious. I was at a church and the preacher said something good. And I went, amen. Everybody looked at me. Like, I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I just ain't used to that. I'm used to going to a place where when they say, when I think of the goodness of you. Well, you know, you guys, you guys are just a bunch of emotional people. One zero for you. You're right on the money. I'm super emotional. You should see me when I lose. You should see me when I get cut off in traffic. But when I think, and maybe you can sit on your pew and not act and not clap and not shout and not run, but when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, when I think how he set me free, how he saved me, when I see the crimson stream of blood that flows from Calvary's tree, when I see what I should have been and what I am, when I look at my family, when I look at my wife, when I look at my children, when I look at the blessings of God, okay, you win. I just can't hold it in. I got to shout. I got to run. I'm too blessed to not... Come on, it's okay. It's okay. Who cares what they say? It's okay to be emotional, visitor. For all the new people, let me ask you a little question. I say this all the time. If God didn't want you to be emotional, why did he give you emotions? Because all the football fans get really emotional. I said all the football fans, ah! how many times the Dallas Cowboys ever paid your rent? How many times the Houston Rockets ever show up at the hospital when you were sick? You'll miss church for them. But they ain't there for you. Oh, I can't believe that. They just want our money at that church. Really? They're letting you in free now to see the football games? I went and watched a little high school. The kids play uh, the, the Christian school league. They charged me $5. I almost left. I'm like, I ain't paying money for this. Stupid game. It's just a game. And there's people pay $100,000 for a one stupid seat and then they lose. And while they're on the sideline, you know what they're doing? Ah, go, 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 go. But we come to church and this is, shh. Don't get too excited. Hold on. I didn't have to pay $100,000 for my seat. If you want to, you can. I didn't pay $100,000 for my seat. Come on, somebody. And I'm guaranteed to win. Sign me up. Put a jersey on me. Give me number 33. I'm ready. And, and don't you tell me to be quiet. Don't you tell me I can't cheer it on. Don't you tell me I can't get on my feet and stomp my toes. Run these aisles. God's been too good to me. So yeah, I've got tear ducts so that I can cry when I'm sad. I've got feet that want to leap, not at a club, a disco, or a bar room, but they want to leap for the goodness of God. So leap on, baby. Dance on. And the queen of Sheba says, woo, look at the way they run. 
Look at the way they dance. Look at the way they shout. Look at the way she plays that organ. Look at the way he hits those drum cymbals. Wow, 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 wow. She said, it's amazing. The preaching's amazing. The building's amazing. The worship's amazing. She said, and their apparel, the way they dress is different. I got a mm, oh boy he gonna get on that now y'all was all good when I was on the on, talking about the stuff but then I got on the dress thing you like oh boy oh boy let me just tell you the way we dress is beautiful from an outsider's perspective from an outsider's perspective A young lady that's got on a dress and looks beautiful. Come on, and modest. They are beautiful. The difference in the world is they are sensual. We're not sensual, but we're beautiful. Come on, I said, daddies, your job is to guard your family and the apparel. Come on, your daughter ought not to go out of the house looking like a hooker. And if she does, don't you get angry angry when she comes up pregnant. You allowed it. And come on, and girls, don't you believe this stupid lie that you have to look sexy to be beautiful. That is a lie. Listen to me, it's a lie. You're beautiful. You know, it's beautiful, long, godly hair. A godly woman that worships. A a holy, modest woman of God. You are beautiful. Am I right, men? Hey, men, you don't need pants so tight that that you leave... The, nothing left to the imagination. There's nothing better looking than a young man in a suit and a tie. Come on. Dressed up, looking nice. With a haircut. Just looks good. Clean shaven. Come on, bandits have all this goatee stuff. We don't need that. The apparel, she said, these people look different. I love that we look different. The Muslims look different. Hindus look different. Come on, the Amish look different. The Mennonites look different. The gangsters look different. Come on, somebody. If they get to have their look, I say the people of God have a look. A righteous look. A a clean look. A holy look. A separated look. Stop moaning it. It's amazing. And from the outside, I know, I know the devil, I know the devil is telling you, oh, they think you look weird. No, they think you look amazing. They think you look beautiful. They're like, oh my goodness, what is different about them? It's amazing. She said, and the cup bears, she said, wow, what they drink. The wine we drink is old wine. <laughs> she said, but the cup, the wine in their cup is a new kind of wine. Oh, baby. You know what that means? She must have got a little taste of the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. And don't you knock it till you try it because when you taste it, you'll go, oh, my goodness. I thought the building was awesome. I thought the preaching was great. I thought the singing was incredible. I thought the worship was majestic. I thought the dress was a, a, a incredibly modest. But my goodness, when I got the Holy Ghost, Oh, when I got the Holy Ghost, it changed everything in my life. She said, the way they dress, the way they dance, the way they preach, the way they sing, the way they, the building and the organizational structure, it's just incredible. It's amazing. It's amazing. The Bible says that after she observed all this, there was no spirit left in her. It literally took her breath away. I love watching a visitor come on the first Sunday. They're like. I never seen nothing like that. (laughs) How many of you remember the first time you came into a Pentecost church? Notice you can all remember it. I said, you can all remember it. How many of you were like, oh my goodness, these people are crazy. Good. That's what we're going for. We're going for crazy. We are crazy. 
We're cra- if the world calls you crazy, that means you're normal. Because what's, what's crazy is a world that doesn't know what's right from it. Come on, right from wrong. But we are a little crazy about Jesus. We're crazy about the blessings of God. She said, I, she said it's a true report I heard. She said, but I, I couldn't believe it till I saw it. And that's what you ought to just tell your coworker that criticizes. Say, hey, before you knock it, you ought to come try it. She said, and then I came. She says, and, and guess what? It, it, it exceeds the fame that I heard. She said, it's better than what it looks like. Can I get an amen? amen. That I looked at it and thought, whoa, this is amazing. But then I tasted it. And whew, it's even better than, than, than I thought it would. And if you think it's good now, new convert, it gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over again. Oh, I keep falling in love with him over and it gets sweeter and sweeter and sweeter. Do I have anybody been living in this for about 30 years? Come on, wave your hand at me if it's better now than it was then. Come on, if this living for Jesus stuff is good now, come on, then it gets better and better and better and better. And then she concludes as I conclude this evening. She said, verse seven, happy. Isn't that what everybody wants to be? Happy. I just want to be happy. I don't know how many times I hear it. If it makes you happy, do it. Why do you think they're smoking and shooting stuff in their veins? Boys turning into girls. Why are they trying to find sex with weird things and do stupid stuff and chemical marijuana? I mean, if, reg- if marijuana was good, the regular should have been good enough, but it's never good enough. You start with a little cigarette, that's not enough, so you gotta have a little marijuana. Then you gotta have the chemical marijuana. Then you gotta go to the cocaine. Then you gotta go to the crystal meth. Then you gotta go to heroin. Then you gotta go methanol. Then you get on Xanax, and then you're just popping pills, and then that's not enough, so you take more Xanax. Then you go, come on, somebody. And then sleeping with one's not enough, so there's two, and then a different this, and this just never satisfies. Never satisfies. Never satisfies your life. But she said, I look at you. And happy are thy men. And happy are your servants. They don't have a lot of money, but they're happy. The ones that are continually in your presence. Hey, friend, you want to be happy? Keep an attitude of gratitude. Keep an attitude of an outsider's perspective that looks at your life, looks at your church looks at your community, looks at your country, and you can say, wow, it's amazing. Peter, Peter thought he would leave us a little word about it. He's, he's talking about the happiness and the joy of the Lord. He said, the joy of the Lord. He said, the joy of the Lord. He said, with joy... The joy of the Lord. It's wonder. No, no, it's not wonderful. He said, the joy, he said, he said, the joy of the Lord, he said, it's full of glory, but the joy of the Lord is grand. Nah, grand. That's not a good enough word. The joy, it, it's joy, it's joy miraculous? Nah, it's not a good enough word. It's joy, it's joy unspeakable. There's really no word to describe how wonderful it is. It's not a burden to get up on a Sunday morning in an air-conditioned home and put on a beautiful suit and tie. It's not a burden to get in a car that has leather seats or on a comfortable vehicle and drive to a church get picked up in a golf cart and come in and have a latte it's not a burden to come in and hear the choir on a Sunday night ring out praises unto our God it's not a burden to dance before the Lord and if it's become a burden to you you just need an outsider's perspective to remind you that the life you are living is of all men most blessed 
that the 99.9% of the world would trade lives with you in a heartbeat. You're a blessed people. We're a blessed people. So on this Sunday night as we gather around as a family and we go into our week, we're going to go into a week with gratitude. I want you to wake up tomorrow and the first thing you do, don't turn over and, 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 and look at Facebook or Fox News. That's a horrible way to start your day. Horrible way. I want you to start your week with a big thank you, Jesus. I need you to find 10 things. If you Come on. What you probably need to do is delete the Facebook app or move it to a different place. And where that Facebook or Fox News or News or CNN, no, y'all don't have CNN, uh, whatever it is, put the notepad. And pop, you'll accidentally open the notepad and off, and I want you to have 10 things. 10 things. My, they don't have to be big. The first one, of course, will be your pastor. <laughs> Why are y'all laughing? That was not a joke. That was a serious thing. First one will be your pastor's wife. I'm sorry, Michelle, pastor's wife, then pastor. I'm just kidding but first one can be your wife your husband your family then I want you to write down whatever's next the car you drive come on how many of you drive cars how many of you have two cars <laughs> look at this how many of you have three cars I'm going to stop there because there's people maybe getting a little jealous watching on the internet you know some of the thieves are watching online. They're like, I saw Caleb's hand. I'm going to come get one of them. <laughs> How many bedrooms you got in your house, Caleb? Four bedrooms. How many kids you got? Three kids. How many are at home? Two. One. That means, we could, that means I could move two of mine into your house. That'd be good. <laughs> We're blessed, aren't we, Sean? I wonder if you could just take somebody's hand right now, and I want you just to begin to give God thanks for them. Just thank, just thank God. How many times do we come to the front and ask? But from an outsider's perspective, we really, we should just maybe spend a whole lot more time saying thank you. Jesus, I thank you for my family. I thank you for my home. That's it. Be specific. Not a random, flippant, casual thank you. That's a general term, but something very specific. I thank you, Jesus, for the health in my body, for the provision of finance. Thank you, Jesus, that I have a car. Thank you, Jesus, for the blessings that you've bestowed upon me so bountifully and that I, Lord, am the benefactor. So many, 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 many blessings. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for health in my body. Thank you that today, Lord, my heart beats. Thank you that I get to live in this country. Thank you, God, for our community. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. Thank you for our church. Thank you for this beautiful building. We're so unworthy of it. We deserve death. We deserve, Father, uh, eternal damnation. Thank you for the gift, Father, of life. Thank you, Jesus, that you came, God, robed in flesh, that you became like us to save us. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for your grace. Thank you, God, that you were merciful and, and gave me, God, grace and mercy instead of what I, I truly deserve. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for my church family. Thank you, God, for the songs and the singing. Thank you, Jesus, for the job I do have. Thank you, Jesus, for my spouse and my children. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, that you've made a way for me. Thank you, God, for hope that I have in my heart and purpose beyond time. Thank you, Jesus, for a call and an anointing. I am a blessed man. You're a blessed person. I'm blessed. You ought to just start saying it. I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. Thank you for your blessings. 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 Hallelujah. That's it. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We're going to baptize a couple in the name of Jesus if you want to stay for overtime. But why don't you high five a few people and just let them know how much you love them, how thankful you are for them. Come on, thanks, thanks. I give you thanks. We're going to be baptizing at least two if you've never been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins tonight's your opportunity.